Hey, welcome to the blog. Yes, I'm kidding about the 300 Mercury XS Pro, but can you imagine a V8, a true V8 300 horse? That would be interesting. Lower RPM, too heavy though. Kind of fun though. Uh, gotta love that motor on the boat. What I thought I would... What I thought I would do is give you guys a quick update on what I've been working on for the last week. I've made some really good progress. Um, so I want to show it to you and get your guys' opinion. And I'd uh, love to hear from you on it. So let me tell you what I've been working on. So one of the first things um, this last week is I was able to get my, my control mixer in. So pretty cool. Um, there it all is. It's all set, ready to go. You know, it's kind of cool. You're going to want to put these in, shape them how you like. And, uh, you know, probably the most time consuming part is just getting the yokes so that they're up and parallel, um, you know, and, and you don't have one off. That took a little bit of time, just some small adjustment there. But that was really cool. Feeling good about getting that in. Made some really good progress. You know, I don't know um, about the what I'm going to do. Obviously, I'm going to have to trim these down. They're going to come down quite a bit because my panel, you know, I'm envisioning coming down, having a cutout, coming across and back up. And clunk, so there's full forward. But, uh, you know, I would love some input. I actually would like to have, you know, a, a stick that kind of bellies out and, you know, comes back. And Or I was considering maybe a carbon post there. But, you know, there's my mixer. So that is in, and that sound you can hear is when it vibrates a teeny bit because you're kind of breaking in these bushings there. That's really what um, this center bar is riding on. And you got your crush, penny crush washers in there, and then you get your slide stops in there, so it can't move side to side. Um, but that's pretty slick. So, I want to show you um, my next piece. Now this was a bit of a surprise. So, when you, you put your mixer together and you drop it in, then you're going to put your elevator push-pull rods in. And I'll show you. So here's, here's the, the elevator push-pull rod, you know, totally straight, slides out, goes right up to the elevator. That's your short rod. Now you get your long rod, and it comes, and it is a straight long rod. So when you put it through your nylon bushings that are now on the underside, which is a very cool Steve Henry upgrade, uh, you're, all of a sudden you're going to realize it does not line up at all. In fact, it doesn't line up with the bell crank right here. So what you have to do is you've got to put a couple of bends in it. And what I ended up doing was putting a bend. I called Steve and he's like, you got to do a bend. Sent me a picture, pretty cool. Bend comes around. You've got to miss your bottom stringer post there. Make this bend come around. And then it's got to turn and come up to meet the bell crank right here. And so you've got to make this come all the way up without touching underneath at full lock. So I've got about an eighth of an inch underneath the bottom, not touching. And then you're going to come down here and this, it's got to come through this bottom tube, go underneath, and then it's got to come up and over. So you've got to have a bend and you've got to have clearance from not touching this cross member support beam all the way in your travel. So you got to make a couple of bends here, which, you know, were, were not super tough. So let me tell you what we did. You know, so we set our neutral mark, made a couple of marks. We set our full back and our full nose forward marks. And basically eyeballed where we would be um, if we were connected. And I did that with both um, the bell crank and I actually connected this rod so we'd have full play, feel what it was like. So once, once we made those measurements, um, then we slid the, the, the rod back out. I actually took out the nylon bushings, and then I used a, um, a small pipe bender. And what, what I did on the pipe bender is my friend and I, we just kind of bent it manually around it. Didn't lock it really in place. Just bent to the mark, slid it, rotated it, bent to the mark, slid it, rotated it, bent to the mark, because you don't want to kink the tube. Then we slid it back in and made sure that we had our curve for the bell crank right here, for the elevator bell crank. That crazy curve right there, which you can see. 
And once we knew that we had that curve and we weren't touching, then we came back up to the front, checked our marks again, because you've got to come through here. You've got to come underneath without touching. You see my finger passes underneath, finger passes underneath. Then you've got to bring it up. But you've got to have that same clearance all the way back in your travel. What that eliminates is having this come up and go through your baggage area. So um, that's a pretty cool mod from Steve Henry. So that piece they send you for the baggage area can just be deep sixed if you want to come underneath. Um, and so that's awesome. So that one, that was a bit of a stumper for me for a minute. And I'm, you know, obviously you're always worried when you start bending stuff. So bend it, don't break it, don't kink it. That, that took some time right there. So then my next one, um, my next piece that we worked on, or I've been working on, is getting my flap actuator all set up and put in place. You know, and it's in, it's not totally locked down tight, but pretty cool. So there's my flap actuator. I love it. Everything locks in place. That was pretty cool. So you're going to want to ream out. So you ream out all your, your fittings, your bushings there. And you know, that takes a lot of time. The reaming from powder coating is really what takes a ton of time. Um, so I basically assembled my flat bracket, got it all put together, you know, kind of snugged up how I'd like it. And, and then, you know, you do spend some time reaming and then you'll want to do a little bit of filing inside here in that bracket for that bolt, for the roll bolt, um, to make it operate smooth. Cause there's just, it's kind of rough inside there. And you get some, you get a little bit of, uh, of the powder coating in there. So I kind of filed and sanded inside where you can't see it, but nice smooth operation. I've got my clearance. So Got my clearance, you know, I'm 3 16 clearance. I've got my clearance down here underneath, which you can see right there. Plenty of clearance. So that is another good, uh, you know, pumped about that accomplishment. So now I got to show you something else. Um, and then I'll show you the last thing I've been working on. So I took one of my stands, kind of made a conversion post here to hook up in here, the tapes just to protect down on the bottom, what this allows me to do is kind of rotate my airplane. So I'm gonna swing this over and I'll show you. So hold on. So let me show you. I worked on my, um, my bottom stringer and that took a little bit of time and I just finished it. So I do need to team, do a little bit of sanding on the high saw, just clean up a few things on some of the stringer posts. But here it is. So there's my bottom stringer right there comes along, comes up, makes a little turn. This, it just tells you to bend. I actually called Steve and asked him, hey, what do I do there? So I'm, I'm gonna figure out kind of what, what's left to do here, but that's, that's where you end it. Um, you know, you're gonna drill and rivet in your, you gotta cut each one of these. So where you spend your time, they give you this 36 inch piece of, of stringer offset aluminum. And, you know, you put it in your front post. And what I did is I bowed it around, brought it back to the back. I clamped it. And then what I ended up doing is I went down here because you've got to have clearance for the flap handle. And it does tell you between two and a half and three, three inches from the fifth cross member behind, at the seat. So I basically started. This was my starting point. I made my, my offset piece here, clamped it. And then I just started looking, okay, where do I, how do I want this to curve? What's the curve I want? So then I would measure, cut, clamp, measure, cut, clamp. And I did that all the way down. And then you can get a pretty good visual of what it looks like as you look down there and kind of see what that stringer looks like. And then once I had them all clamped in place and you know, you need to make your measurement. So you basically say, all right, from the top here, to visually you're saying oh inside there at the bottom is going to be whatever it is two and a half let's say so you got to make sure that when you do cut these that you account for that otherwise you'll be shorter and tighter than you thought and then uh, once i got that then i went back and drilled out my my bushing and then you set it with the uh rivet 
and that's how you're locking your piece in the top. Then the key is marking your holes. Once you've marked all your holes, then you're gonna rotate. I just rotated it a teeny bit, made sure they lined up. And then I, I used my, my punch, bing, 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 went through and punched each one of them. Made sure that I had a nice starting point for the drill. Drilled my pilot hole, came back, drilled my larger hole, and then just rotate it and it, every one of them just lines right up. The high saw is where I've, the high saw has been the biggest learning for me. It's probably been the hardest thing. Um, it's understanding kind of that when you first mix it, it's pretty liquidy, even though you're even, you know, and I've been trying different things. Like I tried the garbage little handbag. That didn't seem to work as well. I struggled with that on these smaller applications. So I mixed one in a cup, cut it off. I found if I, I started having more success when I let it sit for a while and begin to kind of get a little thicker and set up, then using just a small, basically a plastic fork that I chiseled down and sanded and smooth so I could kind of apply it kind of around each one. Then I'm letting it sit for a bit and kind of get it shaped and then dipping my finger in some alcohol um, with my glove on just to shape it and get it cleaned up, making sure I wipe off the excess. Now I've got to go back and I've got to clean up and I'll just do some light cleaning where there might be just a little bit more than I want, which I can just lightly sand off, you know, obviously so it's not so thick and goobered up and, and looks better. Sorry, I camera came down. But that's my plan on that. So I've got my stringer, flap actuator, and I've got my mixer installed and I'm actually ready to do my rudder pedals and I'll show you those um, on the next video. But that's it for right now. So making good progress. Love to get your feedback, love to get some comments, things. I would love to hear from you guys how you're working with the high saw. What are the tricks and tips that make the high saw work better for you in getting it a nice smooth application and in those tight spots and making the high saw not so messy? Because it's a freaking mess. And then you're dipping in the alcohol and trying to clean everything up. And so I suck at high saw. I got to figure that out. But other than that, there she is. It's coming along and I'm pretty pumped about that. So I think the plane is looking good. I like where things are headed. You know, I've been putting a lot of time into it and uh, just been working away at it. So that is, uh, that's where I'm at. Hey, so if you guys have not subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the like button um, ring the bell and uh, get notified. And if you're the one person that always, there's the one person that always has to be the non-liker, could you leave your name and say, I did not like your video so that I can go to your video and not like it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, there's always somebody, right? They hit the don't like, the thumbs down. There's like likes and then there's the one person that says, I'm gonna make sure there's a, a thumb down on that. So that's where I'm at. Love to get your feedback and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next build video.